and welcome back. I'm Ricardo, aka the Med Hatter, and in this series we're expanding our knowledge of color theory. Whether you're a colorist, a cinematographer, or anyone working with visuals, these videos can help you improve with your creative views of light and color. In the last episode, we introduced the main concepts of color harmony and began a journey into color schemes, talking about monochromatic ones. Today we continue by adding one more color to our palettes, introducing complementary color schemes. And in particular, we're going to discuss about the mythological teal and orange. We're going to look at why we have teal and orange, why it is so popular, and how it came to be in the first place. Before moving on, if you're enjoying the content, I would highly encourage you to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to stay up to date with all new videos coming out every week. But without further ado, let's jump into Da Vinci and look at some practical examples to help us in our discussion. Okay, we are here in Da Vinci, and as usual, I prepared a timeline, in this case actually two. The first has stills from movies, the second one has practical examples that we can look at where we work on the color grade ourselves and we build a color scheme. So, when we're discussing complementary color schemes, we mean a palette where we have two main colors which are opposite to each other. By opposite, we mean they're standing on the opposite side of a color wheel. So their hues are complementary. A complementary color scheme can be achieved by many different means. It can be done with set design, with lighting, or with color grading, or a combination of the three. Most of the time it's gonna be a combination actually of the three. So if we want a very neutral lighting and a very neutral color grade, we're left with set design. And so this is probably a good example of that, where we have sort of a neutral color grade. I would say it's not properly neutral as we're going to look at in a moment but overall it's sort of a neutral lighting a neutral color grade and so what creates the color scheme is actually the set design so we have two characters two talents and skin tone is pretty much orange and the the way this color is complemented is with teal in the sky and in the water and you can see how this creates a very nice color contrast where our talents do stand out a lot. If we look at our scopes, in particular our vector scope, we can see how the color traces are sitting almost opposite to each other. This is a very peculiar case effectively because we have the sky and the water that have two slightly different colors. And in particular we have the sky that is a bit more blue and the water is a bit more teal. And so you can see in the trace here, if we zoom in a bit, Effectively, we have the skin tone and then we have two traces for the sky and the water and they sort of split around the diagonal that the skin tone makes. In this case, specifically, we talk about split complementary color scheme. Let's now look at a few more examples. As we said, neutral environment, neutral lighting, then set design creates the color scheme and you can see it here we have a talent which is also red hair so basically a skin tone and a hair are almost all the same color in the set we have a lot of wood which is again sort of a similar color and what they did is use a dress that complements the scheme and so creates color contrast there are other ways to create a complementary color scheme and as we said one can be lighting so let's go for example on this one this is Euphoria, Euphoria season two specifically. And the DP here really worked to create color contrast with the lighting in every single scene. It was very important to him to do that. Uh, he explains it a lot in interviews. And so in this case, we see a bit of a different color scheme where we have a red light shining on the character, highlights in the character. So our main color is this red, which is complemented with the ambient lighting and the fill light, if you will, that is cyan. Let's now go to another example, which could be this one. This is Wes Anderson. And again, here the complementary color scheme is achieved mostly by lighting, where we have the key light that is very warm and the fill light which is quite cool. And as we can see, well, we have a lot of then color in the background going on. So we can see it's spreading around the orange. 
but the main color scheme on the face is orange here and teal here and it's done through lighting. Let's now go to one more example, this one. And in this case, the color scheme has more to do with the color grade. Specifically in this case, you can see that we have the highlights and the mids that are very warm. So the skin tone is very warm, the highlight is very warm, and then we have the shadows that are quite cool. So we can see if we zoom in quite a lot, her eyebrow is quite bluish. If we go to this side of her face, you can see there's a lot of blue coming in here. And so this is what creates the complement, the color scheme. As we go through these examples, you might notice that there's sort of a recurring theme where as we have a talent, one of the colors that we're working with has to be orange. There's fluctuation in the luminosity, it's a light fluctuation in the hue, it can be a bit more orange, a bit more magenta, depending on the ethnicity, but overall, it's orange. Thus, what complements best is always going to be teal. Even if we go for an extreme color grade, so we push it a lot, still if we want something to be believable, we end up with this sort of orange yellowish color. And thus, the real only way to complement it is teal. So the reason why we use orange and teal effectively is not because it's more powerful of a contrast than say magenta and green, but just because most of the stories involve human beings and thus, we have orange and thus we need to have teal. So if we think about cinema history, up until mid 2000s, we didn't have color grades as we intended today. It was possible to work on the film scans to alter their appearance, so to add more contrast, less contrast, more saturation, less saturation, change the color temperature, all that stuff. So most of the work was really done by coupling a negative with a positive film and that would give you the look. With more than 100 years of development of film, both negative and positive, the companies that developed film worked so that their products could have specific photochemical properties that would elevate the quality of the footage taken with their film. And one of the best way for them to do it was to create a film that inherently had more orange in the mids and the highlights and more teal in the shadows because that already gave the possibility to have a complementary color scheme embedded in the film in the look these first frames that i picked i picked them because they are all from 65 millimeters of film so this is all shot on film so you can see this one here we do have even in the neutral areas okay we have warmer mids and cooler shadows. Here, sort of the same. If you look at his hair, his beard, we do see some teal seeping into it. Okay, it's not perfectly neutral. This one, well, we already saw this is probably the one where it's most evident, especially if we compare this area to this area, you can definitely see the transition. Of course, this is probably at this day and age aided by the fact that we have digital intermediates, right? But still, you know, again, shot on film, you can see even the darker areas here, they are slightly cooler, okay? And again, all these are as well, okay? This is all, all, all shot on film. And the crucial thing to understand here is that when you're doing orange and teal, the orange is meant to be mostly in the mid-tones. Because also what you have to understand is that with film, the more you go up with the exposure, the less saturation you can get. This is because, as we saw in the previous videos, film works with subtractive color. So if, we, if you want more saturation, inherently you're lowering the exposure. Another way around, the higher you're going to the exposure, the less color you need to have in there. So effectively, where you can inject color in film is the mids. And this property also ties into how we see. Because another big misconception that we have is that we like film because it's film. Because we're used to see film and so that's what we're used to, so that's what we like. Effectively, 
film was developed to be pleasant. Film was developed to mimic how our eyes see, plus an elevation to that. So all those things that make for a better image. So as we already said, a bit of color contrast inherent to the film, so we create a bit more interest in the image. And effectively, how we see is that our eye tends to allocate more detail to the shadows, more information to the shadow. Where the highlights are a bit compressed, uh, we see a bit less color, a bit less detail in the highlights, and that's just how we see, how we are used to look at the world. And thus, if what we see on screen mimics that, automatically that looks more natural to us, and so we're gonna prefer that, and we're gonna buy into that much more, even if it's like something very far from reality. This is very far from reality, for example, but still it looks so good. So with all this said, with all this established, let's go into some practical examples and see how we can achieve this orange and teal look, this complementary color scheme. Hey mates, Ricardo from the future here. So as I was editing the video, I noticed it was gonna to be too long. There's so many things that are interesting and I don't wanna cut out. So this is gonna be split into two parts. This is gonna be the first part. In the next one, we're gonna look at the practical examples. The next part is gonna be up next week, I promise. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't, hit the notification bell. I'll see you next time. Thank you for your time.